Good afternoon everyone. We will take a little break here from the norm and look at a formula derivation video. We have a surface area of a cylinder. We know the cylinder is multi-components. You have two circles and one rectangle or a square which forms if you were to separate the cylinder into its various components. You can start this derivation procedure by first drawing a cylinder. It doesn't matter if you're drawing a vertically oriented or horizontally oriented cylinder. I'll just show you a vertically oriented cylinder. It looks something like this and you know you have a cylinder about this x and y plane you could think of a derivation procedure here with regards to dx or you could think of one with regards to dy and then you'd have to adjust and it doesn't matter which way you use just be consistent with that i will in this video look at everything here with regards to dx anyhow and when you look at this cylinder here you can use a scissor and separate it into its components you would have something which would come out like this and then you'd have a circle here on the top and a circle here on the bottom. This cylinder here would have a certain height components. Now it depends on the type of cylinder or the height dimension. This could turn out to be a square or it could turn out to be a, a rectangle. It doesn't matter. The end result would be the same. You could just view at everything here with regards to a rectangle. A rectangle with an upper and a lower circle. If you look at this circle right over here and you trace its circumference, you know, c over here is equal to 2 pi r. This circumference, 2 pi r, very well mirrors the length of this one side, 2 pi r. The rectangle or the square has one length, 2 pi r, because it very well fits along this circle, especially in this three-dimensional aspect. And then the other dimension is height. Now you have to look at everything here in terms of an xy plane and start getting your dimensions. If from right here, you're looking at the circle, you look across this way, you have something called a radius, which we know. If you look from right over here, you have from this point to this point of this rectangular square, square, you have a 2 pi r. But if you look from right here to here, then you must have just a pi r dimension. Because this pi r and that pi r will give you 2 pi r. When you separate all of this, you end up having really three plots, but I'm only showing you two plots because two of those are circle. x square plus y square is equal to r square. The other plot it happens to be that of this rectangle or the square but if you take this rectangle you see how it's centered around the origin but if you shift it in a, this direction right here such that it's no longer centered about the origin but one of the vertices of this rectangle makes the origin you have something which pops up like this now you have your rectangle or your square you have one coordinate which is 0 comma 0 you have one point right here which is 0 comma h because you've essentially shifted it up in two directions in an x di direction and in a vertical direction so this entire height is right over here this entire 2 pi r which really here is a pi r but you have a 2 pi r when you've extended it here now you've eliminated the pi r and you've made this 2 pi r 2 pi r comma 0 because you know from here to here it must be that full 2 pi r and then this right here must be 2 pi r comma h and you have everything now you need in place to do the integral calculus procedure for this cylinder surface area formula derivation you have a circle which you have to do the derivation on you do it just for one and you multiply by two because there are two circles and you have to do the area derivation of this and you add them up and you'll go from there we know at the end the result should be the surface area should be 2 pi r square plus 2 pi r h we just have to show you how we can derive this using integral calculus and using the scheme we have over here we look at the circle one first. We know very quickly we're doing area over here with regards to dx. Everything has to be in the y equals format equation. If you solve that x squared plus y squared equals r squared equation in terms of y, you'll get r squared minus x squared. But you know when you bring in a radical, it drastically changes everything to just a half a circle. But we need to have a full circle here so we can just do put a 2 over here and it captures everything. So now we're looking at the area of the whole from minus r to positive r so we know area of x is equal to from minus r to r and then we have this 2 square root of r square minus x square the 2 can come out remember the 2 again is to capture the other half of the circle which the radical eliminates by means of the radical property r square minus x square dx you can use the properties of integrals these are all even functions you can actually simplify your intervals by bringing a factor of a 2 2 times this original 2 and from 0 to r see minus r to r 0 to r you bring in a 2 this 2 multiplies with this 2 and you get a 4 over here now we have a trigonometric expression hidden in here and we know we can see it and we've dealt with this before a is equal to r x is equal to r sine theta 
dx is equal to or cosine theta d theta and intervals everything with regards to this expression 0 and r 0 is equal to r sine theta theta is equal to 0 r is equal to r sine theta theta is equal to pi over 2 so now we have 4 we have pi over 2 upper limit and a 0 here we have a r square minus r square sine square theta we've seen all of this before r cosine theta d theta when you simplify all of this you get an r cosine theta which you multiply with this and you get an r square cosine square theta and you know we've seen this several times before in the previous derivation videos r square cosine square theta this r square can be brought right outside as a coefficient we can erase it by means of a power reducing or half angle identity we can change this to 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2 and we can separate everything across this positive sign we'll have 4 r squared divided by 2 we'll have a 2 r squared 0 pi over 2 d theta and then we'll have 4 r squared divided by 2 which is a 2 r squared from 0 pi over 2 cosine 2 theta d theta I've shown quite a few number of times that this thing's all of the zeros out in terms of its definite integration procedure because what you end up getting from all of this is you will end up getting a sine u from an upper limit of a pi and a zero and you'd have an r square sitting out over here and you'd have all of this would zero out so we don't need to talk about this rather than even have it on the board I'm going to erase all of this part right here because it would all zero out and we'll focus only on this part right here remember we're looking at the circle area and we have to multiply that by two at the end because there are two circles to worry about when you do the integration of this you have a hidden anti-derivative here which is just a theta you have a 2 r square let's make that clear 2 r square you have a pi over 2 and a 0 you do the upper limit lower limit the difference of the two you'll have 2 r square times pi over 2 you'll have pi r square come out because the this over 2 and that 2 will cancel out so pi r square and you have to multiply this by 2 because there are two circles involved in a cylinder so you have 2 pi r square as the area of the circles involved and we'll put that aside now for the last step we have to look at the area calculation here i've got the 2 pi r square mentioned over there here we have to see an equation which forms and we're going to look at everything here with regards to dx again when you look at things with regards to dx the equation have to be y equals format and your intervals must be in the direction of x axis and we do have everything very well laid out we have a clear equation which pops out and that's the equation of this line right over here which is just y equals h that'll be your expression which will come right here y equals we have good intervals 0 to 2 pi r so area with regards to x for this rectangle or, or square is 0 to 2 pi r equation y equals h you just put an h and then with respect to dx when you do the integration of this single monomial which is very easy you bring in dx from an upper limit 2 pi r to 0 sometimes these integration procedures are so easy or the area calculation is so easy that one ends up guessing that if this indeed is how it is done and it is this is a good way to verify and derive the surface area of a cylinder you have to put the upper limit the lower limit and the difference of the two is zero is meaningless so you just get 2 pi r h as the area of this entire space right in here and then you have to add it to what you have over there the 2 pi r square for the two circles involved and that gives you the surface area of the cylinder which is what you wanted all along and that's all we wanted to show you in this video and it's laid out for you and it should be a good derivation procedure and it's something you can count on to be right thank you for watching have a nice day